How's it going? I'm Andrew with Investors Hub, and real quick introduction, Clem Chambers, we're talking to him today because it's Clem's Day Wednesday. He's the CEO of ADVFM, he's my boss, and he's been granted a portent of doom. He's basically liquidated his entire account. He says he dumped the whole thing on Friday and he's all cash, and uh, he's gonna explain to us some of the reasons why he did that and why he thinks that we're getting real close to the top of the market. If you like the video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. You can follow us on Twitter, iHub underscore vision. Be sure to share it with somebody that you know. And after a quick disclaimer, we'll hear from Clem. Please note that our videos are not designed to be direct investing advice. Our channel and our content should just be one stop on the journey of trying to find out where to put your money. So Clem, you sense doom in the market right now. Talk to us a little bit about your thought process. Well, I thought, and I've written about this, that the Fed has got our backs, okay? Because, you know, they're doing their uh, quantitative easing and you can go to the Fed website and see how much they're spending every week. It's a bit delayed, but not that much delayed. And they're just going chunk, 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 a trillion dollars a year. And they've been doing that consistently and they're still consistently doing it. So while they're doing that, the market's going to go up. So I thought, so I think. But you need to trade what you see, not what you think. And after the last Fed meeting, the indices haven't been going down that much. But my portfolio, which is very broadly based, has been taken at absolute kicking. Now, because obviously I use um, Investor Subs and ADVFN's tools, I trace that back to the fact that my portfolio is basically risk on, even though it's blue chip, even though it's big stocks, even though it's dividend payers, even though it's great companies, it's basically a risk on portfolio. So the market's going risk off. Now, why are they going risk off? Obvious answer, COVID. Well, I'm sorry, markets are meant to fundamentally put all this into the price immediately. So it shouldn't be COVID. Fed tightening. Well, Fed goes, oh, yeah, we're going to tighten in two years. Market doesn't look out two years. It looks out a year at the most. It's unlikely to be that, that the Fed will tighten in two years. I mean, you know, excuse me, why would you start selling your shares two years ahead of that? One year, maybe. Two years? No. So both of them. You can say, oh, yada, 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 it's those, but it doesn't seem very likely to me. And then I thought, well, something's doing it. You know, something's kicking my portfolio down the stairs. Index goes down a couple of percent. My portfolio goes down like nearly 10, which, you know, I don't cry for me. I have done extremely well in the last two years, to say the least. I've just put a little bit back. But when suddenly the balloon goes up for my wonderful portfolio, you've got to ask why. Well, the answer is the market is going risk off. So probably not COVID, probably not the Fed, put the two together, probably not that. So something is making people go risk off. Well, what's the simplest answer to why the market suddenly is going risk off? Well, the answer is it's the top. You don't need a person. You don't need a company. You don't need a reason. The top's the top. And if the market has got to the top, people en masse are going to start to, or, or certainly certain groups of them are going to start to go risk off. They're going, oh, a bit worried about the height of the market at the moment. I think it's too high. They're not just going to sell overnight. They're going to go risk off because you go risk on, risk off, and then you sell a bit, and then you sell more, and then you sell everything. That is the spectrum of risk on, risk off. So they've gone risk off. So they could go back risk on, the market could, could fly, or they could go sell, and the market would, in this case, crash. Now, why would the market be at the top? Well, it's because we've got inflation. And, you know, at the end of the day, inflation is not good for stocks. It never has been good for stocks. It's bad for stocks. It makes business very difficult. It makes business um, less predictable. It makes equities more like equities than like bonds. And, you know, when you've got the Fed having the back of, of equities, equities become like bonds. They become very stable. The volatility falls. and the lower the volatility on the stock, if you think about it, that can add a lot of value because you know it's going to go up and you know it's going to go up smoothly. That adds value. It's like in a country where you've got a life expectancy of 50 years, if all of a sudden over the next a generation it becomes 70 years, stocks are worth more because investment is worth more because people are living longer. So it's one of those ideas that inflation hurts stock prices one way or the other. and if there's going to be inflation, there's only so much inflation that these governments will stomach. It's probably about six, seven, eight, nine percent. Any more than that, 
and they're not going to stomach it, or the central banks won't stomach it. They stomach high inflation because they've got to get the debt to GDP ratio down. So that will be five or six percent. Well, we're there now, aren't we? So what are they going to do? Well, what they could be doing, and I'm looking out for this, is they could be doing a reverse twist. That means they are sucking up the cash. And there's a lot of loose cash in the market, causing big troubles for the Fed, for example, where the banks keep pushing lots of cash on them but that the banks have got because of Fed's QE. And they don't want and they don't need and they can't use and they don't want to have it. They want someone else to look after it for them. And they're pushing it back on the Fed. Well, you mop that up by issuing short term bonds and, and actually buying um, back, cashing out long term bonds. That's a reverse twist. So that might actually be going on. Don't know, can't prove it. But nonetheless, the equity market is now looking like it's hitting some kind of top. Now, whether that's a, a sideways channel from here, whether that's a crash, whether it could turn around and go up, I don't know. But I can't sit by watching the market go risk off and just go la 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 la. Not when it's going so far risk off. Anyway, so I get out on Friday, bang, it comes tumbling down on a Monday. And up it went on Tuesday and up it's gone on Wednesday. But even though the indices are pretty much back to where they were on Friday, my portfolio hasn't recovered what it lost on the Monday, which is very interesting. Not that I have that portfolio anymore. I've just got a pile of cash. But I'm still watching my portfolio um, manager, which is on Investors Hub and ADVFN. And I can see what impact this bounce is having on that portfolio that I sold. And it's not as strong as the drop. So that tells me the market is still risk off. And until the market gets not risk off again and goes risk on, I don't see it's very sensible to be in the market at all. And of course, the old uh, cliche in the market is sell in May. I wish I had. Go away. I wish I had. I have now. Come back on. You won't know what this is. It's at Ledger Day, which is the 11th of September, the middle of September. So that is my strategy at the moment, which is. Get out the casino, take your winnings in a big sack and go away. Don't come back until you feel it's safe to come back and, and then start again. But something that I have found in investing that's very useful, if you sell everything and start again, you actually refresh your portfolio because there'll always be some stocks you bought for a very good reason six months ago, nine months ago, a year ago. And that reason's gone and you've forgotten your reason or, or you've discounted your reason. and Actually, once you've sold your stocks and you decide to go back in again, you don't buy them again. And if you wouldn't buy your stocks again, you shouldn't be in them in the first place. Because ultimately, if you're forced to sell today and then you're allowed to buy on Friday, say, if you wouldn't then buy back what you sold, why are you holding those stocks? So I think it's quite a good discipline every year or two to actually sell everything anyway. So if I'm wrong about this, I'll at least I've done my housekeeping. At least I'm starting again from a complete blank sheet. Nice result from the last campaign, which actually stretched from, I think, last September. Um, and, you know, I will be getting back and reevaluating everything from ground one. But actually, I think we've seen the top. And actually, I think we're now going to see it grinding down. So it's interesting because the way that bull and bear markets work is the following. A bull market collapses and then goes up slowly. A bear market slides down and then goes vertical and then slides down and goes vertical. But the net result of that waveform, for example, in a bear, which is to slide down and pop, slide down and pop, is a falling market. And a bull market that goes sliding up, drop, sliding up, drop, the result is, is an upward moving market. So if it goes up 10, down 10, up 10, down 10, it's neither a, a bull or a bear. Or if it does like, like it's done, well, it's gone up as much as it's gone down. So maybe we're just at a turning point. But a bear market will slip down and then bounce really sharply. And everyone will go, oh, 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 oh dear, I've, I've lost all those profits I didn't make. And they forget about the losses. But if it slides down and it pops, it slides down and it pops, then you're in a bear market. And that's what I'm on the lookout for because. If you think about the whole setup, the whole last two years, the whole printing money like water, the whole of the way that the business world has changed completely, well, it will be quite remarkable that we avoid a recession or a depression. 
And we haven't had one, have we? So unless the Fed pulls off a miracle, and it, you know, if anyone's going to do it, it will be them and the other central bankers, we're going to get a comeuppance. And it's going to happen at some point. And well, maybe it's now. But we will see if it hasn't all gone down a lot in the next you know, eight weeks, then I won't be right. I'll be wrong, but I'll still be sat on a big pile of cash and I'll be happy to sneak back in again and um, justify my errors to you all then. Hey, I appreciate you watching. And if you like the video and you haven't already, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and uh, I'll see you again soon.